speak your word over our lives, God, that we would live your word. And tonight, unpack your word for us. Help us to grasp it, understand it. But Lord, help us more importantly to live it. Yes. Let it transform us in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Amen. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 through 32. The situation is that Jacob is reconnecting with Esau after years of hiding from him, thinking that Esau might try to kill him, might have it in for him. Why? Because he had stolen his birthright. Not stolen it, literally. He had, he had <coughs> traded him for a bowl of porridge. But, but you know, sometimes, anybody ever get a really raw deal in business? You, anybody ever get a lemon, a, a car that's a lemon? And, oh, man, you like, it bothers you. Yeah, I mean, this is the ultimate lemon. I mean, a bowl of porridge, and he gives up his birthright. Oh, yeah. Then, not only that, he wanted the father's blessing, and the oldest son got, got the stronger blessing. And he and his mom fooled him. So now, fast forward, he's been gone for years, raising his family, uh, getting married, but he's going to reconnect with Esau, his brother. And he is scared. Now, in, in his fear, which has kind of been how he's operated in some ways, part of his life, he sends his wife and children ahead of him. Such a bold move. If, if Esau doesn't kill them, then maybe I'll cross over. Wow. Women, doesn't that just melt your heart? <laughs> it's, it makes it boil, maybe. I don't know. And so that's where we get to, okay? He's, he's on the other side, and he's going to bed. He's troubled. He, his spirit is troubled. And then this is what takes place. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. <coughs> then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Penuel, which is the same name, it's just spelled differently. The sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. So last week I was preaching from this passage, and I, and I did half the message. And the main points that we touched last week is that, first of all, we have to let God overcome us if we want breakthrough. God will wrestle with us for our breakthrough. I had looked at this passage wrong, I believe, all my life. I had believed that it was Jacob that was wrestling with God. But it says that the man wrestled with Jacob all night. God sometimes is trying to get our attention. He wants to take from us things that have to go for us to move on. God has a desire for our breakthrough more than we do. Sometimes we're going, God, why don't you give me this breakthrough? And God's like, why won't you give me your life? God has to remove the garbage from our past. He has to remove our lack of trust, our fear, our character flaws, our self-reliance. All of those things were a part of Jacob's life. <clears throat> he relied on his cunning. That was his name. His name meant schemer. Supplanter means I, I am somehow going to get my, an advantage on you. I'm going to take over your position, which is what he did with his brother again and again. And so God was like, if you're going to be a patriarch, if you're going to be in the lineage that my son comes through, there's stuff that I want to get out of you. Sometimes we're like, God, I'm waiting for your, this breakthrough in my life. And God's saying, I want 
it more than you do. I want to rid this garbage from you. He wants to transform our identity. We're going we're gonna to pick, pick that apart even more today. And God wants to transform our character to make us more like him. When God has to, he will break us in order to remake us. And the question I was asking last week is, where, are you, where have you been resisting God? Where has he been trying to deal with an area in your heart and in your life? Take something out. The next facet that, that I was seeing that was a part of his breakthrough is that with just one touch, God can break us. All he had to do was touch him and his hips out of socket. He, he was broken. But all night long, God's been wrestling with him. What could God do if he wasn't merciful? It's his mercy and his love that breaks us. And he'll break us just a little bit in order to bless us, in order for us to experience our breakthrough. Not everybody had to go through this process. Sometimes we come to God with a broken and contrite heart. But many times, many of us, just like parents, a lot of times with a strong-willed child, they're like going, man, I love this kid. This kid is amazing, but he's trying to rule the house. And, and someone has to teach him the fear of dad again. It says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and a lot of times God has to capture our attention. And the challenge for us is to stop resisting God. Stop resisting His work in our heart, in our life. Give up our self-reliance. Give up our self-righteousness. Our egos. So today, though, I want to move on. I want us to, we're going to shift gears because what happens in this process is the next thing we see is that we have to learn to take hold of God, to prevail with Him for our breakthrough. It's very interesting. When you look at the progression, first you see God wrestling with Jacob or an angel. It says later that, it, that this was an angel. It calls it a man. The man was wrestling with Jacob all night long. And then he's like, then he breaks him. He, he puts his hip on a socket. It's not until that point that we see Jacob, no, actually, he doesn't cry out to him right away. He's broken. It's when God starts to leave. God will leave us if we want him to. Have you ever wanted the process to stop? God, just stop it. He's such a gentleman. He will do that. Sometimes when God's trying to, to crush us, to get something out of us, we're like going, okay, God, no, I'm going to hold on to this. And you know what? He lets us. He was getting ready to leave. Look at the passage. Jacob's hip was out as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. God was going, let me go, I'm leaving. Then, as the breaking and, and, and watching God leave, it was like he made the realization, no, now I'm desperate for you. That's good. And he said, this is what he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Yes. Yes. And he said to him, what is, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now it's interesting, later on, um, in Hosea 12, 4, it talks about this. Hosea says, Yes, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought favor from him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spoke to us. Jacob wrestled with an angel. Some say it was a pre-incarnate of Christ, pre-incarnation of Christ, that it was Christ that he wrestled with. But it wasn't until he was getting ready to leave that he began to weep, that he began to cry out for me, that he began to seek him. That's where God wants us to get in our life, is desperate for him. We sang about that a lot tonight. It wasn't planned. I didn't tell Nick, hey, this is what we are going to be speaking on tonight. 
But how serious we take like this fast. How serious we take our time with the Lord. How serious we take His call on our life is an indicator in our lives of how desperate we are for Him. This world is desperately in need of sons and daughters of God. I want Him. I want more of Him. I want revival. But I'm telling you this, I want to want Him more than I do. Because I realize that I still love this world too much. This world still has too much grip on me. I sing about a passion for Him more than I live it. More than it's displayed. And I know that there's seasons. I remember when we were doing the 40-day fast and I was praying three hours a night and I, I was going after it with my fast more radical. But sometimes, and what the Lord showed me there was that some of that was even myself. And He was ridding me of self. He's like, I, I want to bless you more than you want to be blessed. I want to pour out revival more than you want it. <laughs> but part of the problem is right here. And part of it is, how long will you stay desperate for me? How long will you seek my face? So he begins to cry out to God. He says, I am not letting go until you bless me. I am not letting go until you bless me. I got, some, someone was like, I don't want to fast just seven days. I want to do ten days. And then you got people like Oscar. I want to fast the whole year. <laughs> How desperate are we? Father God, I ask you to increase our desperation, Lord. We don't even know how to get more desperate for you. Help us. We have to get sometimes to that place of weeping as Hosea talks about. How long has it been, been since you wept in desperation for him? Cried out for him? How long has it been since you just shut the door and are in a room by yourself? God, I want you. I need you. I'm not letting go until you bless me. We can go through the seven days. We can do the things that are on that list. And it can be religious duty, exercise. And it won't have the effect of breakthrough. You can throw that paper in the garbage and get desperate for him. And you can encounter God. It's a guideline. It's a resource. It's a tool. I believe sometimes when we use those resources, when we, when we go, I, I'm intentional, this is what I'm doing for this time, but we go beyond it. I know for myself, I had done the 40-day revolution numerous times. One young lady had done it, I think, three times, and it was her senior year, and um, she had done it in, in two years, three times, and she was graduating. She's like, this is the last time I'm going to do it, and it was the first time that she took it serious. And she was like, God, I want a divine appointment every day. I'm going to do this, but I want a divine appointment every day. And she began to have testimonies of people being healed, of people being set free, of leading people to the Lord. She ended up speaking at, at our events. Now she's the number two speaker at Ravi Zacharias Ministries. Whoa. And works, she's like his personal assistant in Oxford, England. And uh, she went to Oxford at the age of 16. <laughs> And, um, and, and but, but, so God sets her in an important position in this world to impact the lives of others. Why? Because she got serious and it was real. And she went after God. God is in the business of overcoming us. It's his aim in all the process of his mercy has been but to overcome our heavy earthliness and selfishness, which resists his pleading love. Listen to this again. His aim in all the process of his mercy has been but to overcome our heavy earthliness and selfishness, which resists his pleading love. His love wants us. He is desperate for us. He is the lover who seeks us more than we seek him. He wants to draw out that worldliness, our love of this world, our selfishness. 
The problem comes when we forget how awesome He is. When we lose the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. I, I remember myself one time. I was, I, I want to say like nine or ten years old. And I, I remember a lot about this night. You know, there's times that are indelibly marked in your mind. This is one of those times. It was actually a wonderful lesson, but it was a scary lesson. I wanted to watch Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. It was a Disney movie. It was about witchcraft, but I, I didn't care. I thought the kids looked cute and, and the commercials were amazing and, and it looked interesting, fascinating. Something about witches and stuff like that. And, or, or either that or, or Chase of Witch Mountain or, or something like something up to Witch Mountain. It was one of those two Escape. movies. Escape, yeah, something like that. It was one of those two, two movies, I don't, I don't remember. And my parents were saying no. And it was Sunday night, we had been to church, I knew it was time for it to start, and I was mad. And, and I said something to my dad, and my dad said, do I need to spank you? And I said, go ahead. <laughs> Big mistake. Okay, my dad was a very civil man, and, and he's a great friend of mine. I was not abused. I do tell people he beat me up every morning, and uh, but that's because he got up hours before me to have his quiet time. I mean, that was that was for me getting beat up. But but um so but this day was different. This moment was different. I, I was talking back to my mom. My mom had said something. Do I need to spank you, or does your dad need to spank you? And I said, go ahead. Now. My dad was by the car, and I was by the front door, and there was a bit of a walk, but I know his feet did not touch the ground. He covered that span, wham, and he had me up against the wall with my shirt, and he pulled his fist back. Now, at the time, my head was about this big, I think. I mean, it was not real big, and his fist looked like it was this big, and all I could picture was my head splattering against the wall. Now, my dad has never hit me, and he did not hit me, but something needed to happen in that moment. I forgot who I was and who he was. The fear of, the, of dad is the beginning, is the second step of wisdom, okay? I, I remember uh, one of my friends I worked for, and... Um, and uh, he was an incredible dad. He was a man of God. He was a chaplain in the state of Georgia for a number of the athletic teams. And uh, I worked with him in landscaping. And he's just an amazing guy. And we, he, the nickname, or the name of the company was Summertime Landscape. But his nickname was Summertime We Work and Summertime We Don't. And, uh, but he would pay me even when we weren't working, even when he didn't have jobs, he would pay me. He was a great guy to work for. <clears throat> but, um, I remember this one day, his son climbed up on, we were doing this giant home, like 11,000 square feet, and, uh, and, and it had, you know, one of these giant balconies um, with concrete, you know, walls, and his son had climbed up onto one of the walls and was looking over the edge, which was at least about a story, a story and a half up from the ground, and he grabbed his son and held him out over the, the ledge for a second, and then grabbed him back and and he was shaking, he was in tears, and he said, better scared than dead. Son, don't ever do that. And I was like, okay. Now, I'm not advocating that per parenting method, but he was trying to teach his son a lesson. And, and, and sometimes God holds us out over a ledge. He's not going to drop us. He's got big hands. And we're like, God, why did you do that to me? And he's like, do I have your attention? Do I have your attention? That's what's going on in Jacob's life. God's reminding him, all I have to do is touch you, son, and the battle's over. You can't win a wrestling match with me, but I see your desperation. I see your heart turning to me. And because your heart is turning and you are getting serious, you're asking for a blessing, I'm going to bless you. God wants us to even move into this fast. Not on a religious duty, not haphazard, not halfway. Come up with your own. If you, don't, if you don't like those, come up with your own, but take it serious. Say, God, I want a blessing. I want you. I want to take hold of you. I need you. Uh, the measure that I've operated uh, in of God is not what I need for the next level in my life. I'm there. All of a sudden, God has surrounded me with people with bigger needs than, than I've dealt with. And I, I felt like I've dealt with about everything, but all of a sudden, 
It's like a lot of people have satanic ritual stuff and, and a lot of heavy demonic stuff. And I'm going, all right, yesterday's anointing isn't, isn't cutting it. I want more. I'm, I am, on this seven day, and I'm going to go beyond seven days, but on this seven day, I'm taking my fast more radical, and I've taken one. But I'm going, I'm, I'm praying over a list of names that need significant breakthrough in their life. I'm going to be praying for unsaved people. I'm going to be doing those things. But for me, I'm going, God, by, by the end of the seven days or ten days, I am going to go, and I'm going to minister to these people, and I'm believing for a greater signs and wonders and miracles to come as a result. I want you, God. I want more of you. For that to happen, God, is stripping. That was all under. We have to learn to take hold of God. Last point. We gain a prize when we lose. We gain a prize when we lose. This was worth the battle. It was worth his hip getting out of socket. It was worth what it cost him. It was worth losing a night's sleep. Because he went from being supplanter. He went from being Jacob, schemer. He went from being fearful to prince of God, Israel. God became part of his name. L is God. He got a new name. And now his name had God as a part of it. Do you know how many people throughout the Bible got new names? How many of you want a new name? You want a new identity? God has given that to me, but I'll take another name. He talks about in Revelation that he will give you a new name. He will write your name on a stone, and only you will know it. I mean, he, he, it, it, it is cool when God gives you a name. Ask him for a new name. Ask him who he sees you as. The next thing was the place. He called the place face of God because he got a new name when he saw God face to face. He encountered God. That's what we're hungry for. We sing about it. How seriously will we pursue it? Because it was when he turned from God wrestling him to him going, I'm not going to let go. I want you. I'm desperate. Don't leave me. That he saw the face of God and became the prince of God. Jacob became the prince of God when he saw the face of God. The prize came after the price. Sometimes the price has to be paid before we can get the prize. Some people are wanting the blessing, and they're going, but yeah, the fasting thing, that's just not for me. <laughs> it's blown me away. Pastors, friends of mine, they're like going, well, this is just a little too radical. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't get that thing. I'm, I'm more into feasting than fasting. Those are literal words that I heard. How bad do you want me? How bad do you want me, the Lord says? How bad do you want the healing? How bad do you want the breakthrough in your life? We're waiting for God to do something for us, and He's waiting for us to seek Him, to pursue Him with all of our heart. He had to be ready in order to be, receive the blessing. Sometimes we're going, God, I, I could really... I'd be glad to be like the, the evangelist, you know, preaching to millions. Just, you can do that to me. What did it cost them to get where they are? What price did they pay to get there? Why, well, God, why did you pick me to, to, to be a nobody and a nothing? It's not what he does. He had a plan. He had a destiny for Jacob. And he was willing to wrestle it out of him. His new name was married to God. It was one with God. His identity now was God. God was a part of who he was. His DNA, every bit of him. Sometimes he was still Jacob. It's interesting. If you look, sometimes he was called Jacob and sometimes he was called Israel. Afterwards, I was, it, was, it was interesting. And it's based upon what is manifesting in his life. Wow. Very much. 
When, when, when Jacob came back, anybody experienced that? You, you like have had the encounter with God. You've heard his voice. You've seen his face. He has transformed you. He has used you. And then you're like going, you're, the old person rises back up. It's interesting. Peter is the same way. Sometimes he was called Peter. Sometimes he was called Simon. God had given him that new name. Jesus had. He called him Peter. Because he heard that from Christ. That was his new name. But later on, he was like, Simon, Simon. Do you love me? He's Peter. On this rock I will build my church. Now he's Simon. And then he called him Peter again. He was restoring him, restoring him back to that place of identity. <clears throat> On the last deathbed scene, when the patriarch lifted himself in his bed, with the prophetic dignity, pronounced his parting benediction on Joseph's sons, the new name reappeared. When he was blessing Joseph, his new name, Israel, appeared again. For years, he went kind of back to being Jacob. But now it's like my parting act, Israel, rose kind of like Samson. <coughs> For a while, he lost his way. But in the end, he remembered who he was. When God truly gets a hold of us, our reputation changes. Our identity changes. Our physical changes. He, he walked with a hip from that point on. Sometimes our, our physical, we, we go from walking like this, like, I'm in the room, you know, to walking humbly. There can be a physical change in our demeanor. People can see it on you. Well, what's happened to you? Sometimes it's, we go from heaviness to life and joy. Sometimes we go from pride to humility. But when that change happens, people can see it. They can see it in us. <coughs> Sometimes we're so full of self and so self-assured and, and arrogant. And when that dies, we become more attractive in God's eyes, in the kingdom. There's a character change. He becomes more submissive to God. What's really interesting, and, I, and, and, and this kind of blew me away, is... In Jacob's life, and this is my last point, he became my God. What you see is, um, first of all, Genesis 28, 13. This is what it says. Yahweh was standing there beside him saying, I am Yahweh, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Abraham, and I'm the God of Isaac. Genesis 32, 9. Then Jacob prayed, O oh God of my grandfather Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O oh Lord, you told me, return to your own land and to your relatives. And you promised me I will treat you kindly. Genesis 31, 42. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac had not been with me, certainly now you would have sent me off empty-handed. Who is he? He's the God of my grandfather and he's the God of my father. He's the God of Abraham and he's the God of Isaac. But in Genesis 33, 20, and he set up an altar there and he called it God, the God of Israel. The faith of his father now became his faith. Before, it was different. We've been inspired by some men of faith here. And, and we're, we're like, oh man, I, I want to experience God like Oscar. I want to experience God like Luxon. And God's like, I want you 
to experience me Amen. as the God of Richard, as the God of Amen. Nick, as the God of Kylie, <laughs> as the God of Bill, as the God of Pam. Every one of us, that we would experience him as our God. He's the God who knows my name. He's the God who's given me a new name. He's the God who I have seen face to face. I'm not here because of Richard Mall's faith. I'm not here because of Andrew Mall's faith. I'm not here because of Nick and Kylie. I am here because my God. He's my God. And he uses me to set captives free, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. I am a son. I am a prince of the kingdom of the king. Amen? Amen. Job 42.5 says this, I had heard rumors about you, but now my eyes have seen you. I had heard rumors about you. I heard about what you did over there. I heard about what you do at this place. I heard about what you do through Todd White. I heard what you do in, in Redding, California. I want to go there. But now I've seen you. I've seen you work in my life. I've seen you sit captives free in my life. Mm. Amen. Amen. We are now going to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever I have gone. Genesis 35, 3. That's, that's where that comes from. I'm going to read that again. This is, this is Israel talking. We are going to Bethel house of God, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me everywhere I have gone. And Genesis 48, 15. May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. His parting act, he's Israel again. He is passing on his patriarchal blessing to his sons. And he's remembering God. May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd, my shepherd all my life, to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. <clears throat> Through this journey, he came to realize he had a revelation of God's presence. It wasn't a song that he sang about. It was a God that he encountered, that he knew, whose voice he heard, who shepherded him, who was with him. He had a revelation of his care. <coughs> He's been my shepherd all my life. He's redeemed me from all harm. It's what God wants us to have. If we're going to trust him, we've got to know He's been our protector. He's been our provider. He's been our lover. He was all of those things before this encounter, but Jacob was trying to take care of his own self. He, he was relying on himself. He wasn't relying on God. He was relying on his schemes, on his um, deception. But with one encounter with God, it was like all that was stripped away. And now he's like, I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. It's where I want to be. Amen. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord. I thank you, God, that it's your mercy that pursues us, that tries to strip us, God, of our self-reliance, of our fear. It's your love that's trying to grab our complete attention. And God, we want to be those that, that passionately pursue you, that come after you, that you are our God, that the signs and wonders and miracles that were with the apostles are happening in our lives, yes. that you're not a God we talk about and read about, but you're a God we experience, we yes. encounter. 
I remember, when some, I remember when some Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door. And I asked them, what's your favorite part of the Bible? They said, the whole thing. I was like, good answer. I was like, but do you ever wish you could have been there when he healed the sick, when he cast out demons? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what would you think if I told you right in there a lady was filled with cancer this week? And earlier, or last week, I think it was, we were casting demons out of somebody. And they're like, well, you know, we don't believe in that stuff. I was like, it's in the Bible, right? And they're like, yeah, but, but it doesn't happen. I was like, so how would you explain it? And they're like, the devil. And I was like, so the devil can do that, but your God can't? And I said, I used to be a part of religion just like yours. I didn't prepare this speech, I, but I was going, I used to be a part of a religion that had a form of godliness but denied the power thereof. Amen. And I said, when you're experiencing the book that you talk about, then I will sit and I want to learn from you. Father God, may we be those that experience your word, that live it, God, that walk in the fullness of it. God, whatever it takes, God, give us that passion to pursue you, to seek after you. God, during this seven-day fast beginning on Sunday, God, I pray, Lord, that we will make time to be in your presence, that we would lock ourselves away, God, that we would give that opportunity, Lord, to our spouses and, and, and others, God, to lock away with you. We want you, God. We want breakthrough, God. This church needs breakthrough. This city needs breakthrough, God. You need some people that have been broken. You need some people that have been broken who aren't relying on themselves, who've seen your face and have a new name. Thank you, Lord. I want to say goodbye to the people that are online, but actually before I do that, I just want to pray. Father God, I thank you for those that, that join us online, that watch. <clears throat> and I ask you, Father God, in Jesus' name, to bring breakthrough into their lives. I ask you, Father God, to send this message out, Lord. I pray, God, that many would, would take up this challenge to fast, Lord. That they would say, I'm committing to being a part of this fast. I want to break through in my life. I pray, God, for breakthroughs all across this land. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Good night, amen. everyone on the That's a good